Hi, everyone. Wicked overnight action every night. It's like you have to uh, be on crystal meth to trade and be able to stay up 24 hours. You go to sleep, things look one way. You wake up in the morning and everything changes. Ch -ch 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 changes, David Bowie. So I have a couple of uh, thoughts here. You know, it's not immediate action. Hi, Sinatra, fine. Stephen, welcome to face. Well, looking at gold here with the market down sharply, as long as we hold 1640, if we don't, it's going to be a pretty good break back down to, you know, 1600, 1580. If we do hold it, I see the potential for uh, one more high for a third drive. This is a four hour chart and shows up pretty good on the daily too. As you know, some people are saying this is one and this is two and this is three and it's possible, but I don't like this type of spread between the formation. You know, it's too much action. Uh, I like tighter groupings of these threes. So, you know, otherwise you could always, you know, find a three, right? But now it's looking to me like one, two, and we could get a three up here. And we're, you know, most likely on the daily not be able to get above 70, just like we weren't last time. So alert for that in the gold, uh, should that happen? Silver should be able to rally back towards this level here. 1770 to 18 bucks if that happens. And that means a dollar rally that I talked about yesterday um, is just going to uh, terminate or at least back test it. Yesterday I showed that we left an island bottom, this island bottom, and we had some good acceleration. I'm trying to just stay patient for uh, bigger things. And, you know, there's all kinds of FIB levels here. But I have a lot of confluence in the Dixie. I don't know if we could rally this far, but I sure would be a seller up here. Uh, I would try it at 61.8 with the confluence of the moving averages right here. Everyone we'll see that. And then I want to wrap it with the S&Ps, just like we have. Uh, the potential for a three drive to a top in gold. Uh, that might be what's setting up here in the S&Ps as well. Um, third drive on the line would be about 2630, another 160 below it. And when Steve brought up uh, 2600 yesterday, kind of rang a bell for me uh, for this reason. A couple of important moving averages coming in there. Uh, where is it? Oh, yeah. It's auto scale. Okay. So look at this. This is your weekly. Okay. 26.30. The daily. Okay. So some confluence there with this moving average coming in around the third drive line. Almost looks like an uptrend. And then look at this. You know, I, I like it when they show up whether it's a 50 or the 200, look where the monthly moving average comes in. 2,600 almost looks like an uptrend line, doesn't it? And it's coming in right there, 2,601. So, um, you know, some of the targets that Steve showed on his charts, uh, I have confluence of moving averages on the monthly and on the weekly. Okay, so this could be very important. If we take this out, I think 2000s there, but I wanted to show you there's a lot of confluence at uh, right around 2600. You have a three drive and a couple of moving averages. Might be the time where, say, we bottom at 2600 and we peaked at 34, that's 800. Then maybe we get a 50% retrace back to 3000 or something. Just thinking ahead a little bit. So uh, those are my views. We have an excellent interview, first time with Willie Delwich. He's with a very high-end firm, R.W. Baird. If you've ever heard of them, it's going to be Willie's first interview with us. And a uh, great time to talk to someone who's a little bit more Main Street than uh, Forex Analytics and all the derelicts that we trade with.
So, you know, put on your tie for the interview. And Blake, um, how are you doing? How's your food supply? Uh, Derelict. Up? Huh? Derelict. All of, uh, you know, tra- <laughs> you know, commodity traders. Oh, oh I must be one guys. of those people. Those yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> you know. Uh, so, uh, shirts on the floor and go into the bathroom and eat a bunch of Tums and aspirins and <laughs> derelict. Is that, is that it? Is that yeah. all you had? <laughs> yeah, that, I, well, you know, Blake, it's a yeah, show. <laughs> what, what goes on on the floor stays on the floor. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, it's a, uh, one of the, one of the notifications that I got this morning from, um, from JP Morgan is volumes are, a lot lighter than they've been the last couple of days as uh, we're consolidating, you know, we're, we're currently, um, Oh shoot. They changed everything around. Uh, okay. Hold on. The there markets are a little you guys see my screen? My S and P. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, things are, things are a lot quieter today as uh, the markets are consolidating these recent moves. And, um, as I tweeted and, you know, uh, tweeted actually earlier, well, let me, let me revisit this. So as I tweeted a little earlier, um, you know, we're consolidating in this, um, this triangle. Now the assumption is, uh, that we're going to move lower because this is, uh, this is the, you know, the trend is down. Right. Um, and, and so the, that's going to be the running assumption is we're moving lower. I'm hoping we don't. I'm, I'm hoping we actually, uh, you know, rally out of this triangle higher and, you know, form some sort of, uh, as I was, I was just drawing for you guys, cause I already drew it for the guys and gals in the chat room, but I'll, I'll just kind of, uh, let you guys know what I hope happens. What I hope happens is we actually rally out of this, uh, out of this triangle higher get everybody nice and long. So, you know, like a move up towards yeah. 2,900 and some change and then reversal. That's what I'm hoping happens today because, um, you know, I always like to, I always like to catch the market wrong footed if I can. That's like, you know, uh, that's the best way to trade in my opinion is, you know, when you, when everybody starts thinking, Oh, the tide has turned and you're, you're going one direction. But like, I, I know, I know, for 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 us the trend and obviously i'm focusing focusing on the s p because i i i um you know will tailor my fx trades around what happens in equities but what i'm hoping happens is we you know come out of this triangle we start to rally and everybody thinks oh my god the bottom's in and then when um when the market actually rallies and gets everybody into the, you know, like the, all the long side trades, then you look for a failure. And then I like to trade that failure, like somewhere up here, like this, this is, you know, the area where, you know, I would be looking to be a seller. So, um, like I said, that's what I hope happens today. You know, there, there, there's a lot of, you, there's a lot of things that can argue, why we could rally uh we're going to get some sort of stimulus package from the uh from the trump administration hopefully you know today or tomorrow uh australia is uh implementing um some uh you know aggressive measures they they announced that overnight i forget what the the dollar amount was it's like three billion aussie dollars or something i, I don't know right off the top of my head i can't remember uh you have um, an emergency rate cut from the bank of england this morning so, sorry, um, you know, what I'm hoping happens is we get, you know, a little bit of a rally, a counter trend rally that gives us an opportunity to sell into. That's what I'm hoping. Now, I, I'm not banking on that right now because I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for us to move. I'm not, I'm not going to, um, you know, uh, make a move here not knowing what's happening. Um, because I mean, let's, let's face it. Um, the, the news stream over the last, other than, you know, like economically what, what countries are doing and you you got Merkel talking about, we'll do whatever it takes, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, you, you have 
aside from the economic news stream, you have the 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 the, the news news about you know the increasing cases and you know a lot of state of emergencies that that news stream is not so positive so um the, you know you got two opposing forces here and and you know i'm in the camp of you know what are you going to do economically that's going to really while well, the euro's getting a catching a bid here um i'm kind of looking around see if there's any news coming out i don't see anything but what what's the uh you know what's actually going to fuel uh, uh, an actual recovery. It's not going to be the economic, um, uh, because of the economic implications of all these central banks or, or fiscal uh, uh, spending from different governments, that'll help cushion the blow, but it's really going to be the virus subsiding a little bit. And right now, it looks like we are probably the next, I say we, I mean, in the United States, we're probably the next epicenter of this, uh, this coronavirus. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a big push pull uh, down at these levels. And I think we have to be really careful, um, you know, as we're, as we're navigating around here. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not convinced either way. I, I, I wish I was, I had more conviction right now, but I don't. And uh, the, the one thing that I have conviction about is volatility is still quite high. And even though it may be a little uh, light right now, volumes might be down a little bit as we consolidate, that doesn't mean vol volatil volatility just automatically disappears. I think we're going to get volatility probably today uh, as we pull out of this, uh, this triangle, whether it's, whether it's you know, an upside surprise or it's a resumption of the downtrend. You know, the, the, uh, the, the propensity for a triangle to can have a continuation pattern, that's the, the higher risk right now. The higher risk is that we break down. But I'm hoping we get the opposite because like I told you guys before, this is how I want to play the S&P. I want to, well, not necessarily the S&P, although I might actually uh, short some S&Ps up there. But it's actually how I want to play the market today. I want to see a rally first and then sell into that, you know, today or tomorrow. But like I said, it's it right now. It, it's wishful thinking. Um, right now, we're dealing with this consolidation, which I think we have to just be really respectful of. And uh, I'm looking at a couple of different things. Um, just you know, kind of following a few different things. First, first of all, is the U.S. dollar Mexican peso. Um, if we rally. And this, that's the big F, right? If, if, if equity markets rally here. Um, I think the US dollar Mexican peso, this is a currency pair I actually want to trade to the short side. Now, you guys have known, and I, and I, and I, I don't have to be, um, you, know, you, you know, I don't have to explain this to you, I don't think, in too great a detail. You guys have known for the last few weeks, I've been extremely bullish the dollar Mexican peso. I played it long as we came out of this descending wedge, and I've been playing it long for the last couple of weeks. Uh, I did not catch this last tail end of this move because we, we moved a lot more aggressively than I thought. Um, but Banksico, the Bank of Mexico, has announced that they are stepping in and intervening. So um, what, that, what that means is basically the, they're, they're, they're trying to stop the depreciation of the, pe of the peso, which, uh, I know. I know. I explained this yesterday. For central, as as a central bank, um, you know, you you don't. Well, as a as a trader, you don't really want to fight a central bank. So if 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 Banksico is out there trying to basically stop the peso from depreciating in value, well, the 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 trade that you want to be is is long pesos. Now, th there's a certain time to be long pesos. You, you're long pesos during a risk on environment. So, um, you know, does that mean that the peso will go, uh, you know, will go up? No, because if, if we can continue to see downside pressure in equities, the US dollar Mexican peso may just continue to grind slowly higher. But if stocks actually bounce, then the dollar Mexican peso should, uh, you know, sell off again. Now, you know, 
downside at this point in time is limited to 20 uh, right here to 20, you know, 30, 20, 25, something like that. So there's not a lot of downside here, but that's what I'm watching. Not necessarily trading at this moment. I'm watching just in case equities do rally. I want to see, uh, you know, confirmation that the, that the peso is actually strengthening. And, and if you're like, well, I don't want to even mess with the peso. I want to, you know, I'd rather deal with other emerging market currencies. Great. So, um, you know, look at the lira or, you know, maybe the South African rand. You can focus on those too. But the emerging market currencies, I think, will give you a lot of clues as into, as, as, as into what's happening in you know the equity market so that's number one another thing that i'm watching is i'm watching the euro i i really wanted to buy the euro i have i have buy orders just so you guys know uh, it's still actually active i have buy orders at the um 112.50 level okay the reason why i was looking for a buy down there is obviously i i blogged about it yesterday so if you missed the the week ahead video then or not week ahead video uh the the chart of the day um blog yesterday, then um, I'll just quickly tell you that I was expecting a move down to the 618. This It's 618 this move. You see that? Okay. I think it's actually also a 38% retracement or close to of the bigger move too. Um, but it's a 618 of this move. It's, all, it's at the breakout point. I was hoping that we would dip because last night we closed at uh, 112 at 90 somewhere right here we closed right here so i was really hoping we'd get that dip down to uh 112.50 so i could look for longs and uh and 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 get long with a you know relatively tight stop unfortunately that didn't happen so the euro is up uh this morning and why is it up this morning well you know we have some risk off activity so while the stock market is staying heavy you, you would expect that the, uh, the Euro continues to stay, you know, pretty well bid. So if, if the market, if the stock market does rally, then the Euro might have that chance of, of coming back down here. And, and I'm, I'm trying to be patient with it. I'm not, you know, I'm not stepping in front of the Euro saying, get, damn it, I'm going to miss the boat. I'm going to get long here. I'm not trading like that. I, I'm, I'm just trying to be very, you know, careful in where I'm, you know, buying things. Well, look at the S and P's coming down. Watch the S&P here. We're kind of come down towards the support. I think this is going to be really, really key support. I want to see how we react right here at, uh, and that's only 15, 15 points away, not, not very far. So just uh, keep that in mind. All right. Uh, the, the cable. So here's the pound. They re they released their budget this morning, but that, but more importantly, they did an emergency rate cut. And so uh, you saw the cable actually dip first, but as we have seen with emergency rate cuts, the currencies tend to strengthen because, you know, you're like, wow, okay, I've got, you know, the central bank behind, uh, you know, that particular currency. And so you, you, you can see the opposite of what, you know, conventional wisdom would say, oh, rate cut, uh, pound sells off, uh, whoever was up and around, I was asleep or I would have been buying the cable overnight, uh, especially on this false breakdown. I would have bought it right here. This is exactly how I would have traded it. Sell off. As soon as we got back above like this 2870, I would have been long. So unfortunately I wasn't around, so I didn't see it. But um, you'll notice that the cable actually respected the 78% retracement um, and it did a false breakdown and then moved back up. So what do you do with it here? I don't know. I don't, it's the, 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 uh, the cable, as far as I'm concerned now, it wasn't, you know, last week when I was buying it here, you know, coming out of this, uh, th this wedge, you know, it was very bullish, but now it's very convoluted. I don't know really what to do with the cable. So if I don't know what to do with it, then, you know, my, um, natural inclination at this point in time is, not to do anything. So as you can see, the cables just, you know, you, you, I mean, you guys can try to trade it, but uh, I, I would be a buyer on dips. I don't think I'd be selling now that we've done this false breakdown. Um, but does that mean that you, you, you know, buy it at current levels? I, I just kind of don't think so right now. I don't, I don't think, I don't think that's the case. One of the, um, one of the things that uh, was really moving 
the uh, the dollar yen yesterday. Oh, the dollar yen just spiked. Holy cow! What the hell? What? Uh, something just happened. Something about monetary policy next week. Um, oh, it's a Reuters headline. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so the headline is BOJ likely to ease monetary policy next week to prevent uh, market volatility from souring business sentiment. So they're looking to ease. Hmm. Now remember, weakens their currency first. We just saw it. This, this is the headline, guys. BOJ likely to ease monetary policy next week to prevent market volatility from souring business sentiment. So you see the spike up, people go ease, and then it starts to strengthen again. Same, same reaction we saw from the, uh, from, from the cable overnight. Now I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit uh, nervous about trying to uh, short the dollar yen at this moment. Because I, I, I'm not sure if it's going to help improve risk appetite or not. So I'm just kind of, uh, I'm kind of. Uh, Last time we had central banks in a coordinating manner throwing everything at it, it was 2008. And in the short to medium term, it did no good. Yeah, the marks, markets did move lower. You're right. And so I, I, I'm a little, thank you, Stephen. Stop talking. I'm going to, I'm going to, I got it for another 15 minutes. I know, um, bro. I know. Yeah. Steve's throat isn't feeling great. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to speak a little bit longer than normal today. So as you can see, look, the dollar yen spike up and then right back down again. So. I, I, and I'm not doing anything, just so you guys know. I'm, I'm not doing anything here. I'm, I want to short it, but I want to see if it, in, if it improves the equity markets right now. And right at this moment in time, it's not. So uh, let me, uh, I'm just taking a quick look around, okay. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. Loud and clear. Hear you. Okay. You're a little bit country, and I'm a little bit rock and roll. Mm. Donnie and Marie. Donnie and Marie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie and Marie. Osmond. On, different, on different sides of the world, have had the same television uh, schedule. Yeah. <laughs> Celios is actually half American. <laughs> I, I know. He's, uh, he so won't Steve. admit it, though. I know. No, I don't just blame uh, you guys. but. Um, that's funny. Uh, okay, so a little bit of action. Like I said, I'm not sure what to make of it. I'm not sure how to trade it. That's why I'm like uh, not going to do anything at this moment. I'm just kind of going to just let her sit. Let her sit. Okay. Um, okay, so what was I saying earlier? Oh, so this is, this is one thing that I was watching yesterday really carefully is um, – the bond market. So if you look at the 10 year, now I'm going to, I'm going to go to the yields here in a moment, but here's the 10 year. We had this, this, if you guys don't know what this is, this is dark cloud cover, a uh, big chart formation uh, reversal pattern. Now, um, as, as you can see right now, yields are coming down right after uh, the, that just happened with the BOJ, but I'm not convinced at this point that um, uh, that that bonds are you you want to get long again? I, I know I know you know it's just looking at just looking at this this. Let me go back to the ten year. Going back to this chart, I, I I was I if you remember last week, I told you we were over here. I said we're probably going to go here to the one hundred twenty seven percent extension and move lower. That was my view last week. Okay. Oh crap. I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Sorry about that. It's allergy season here. I, the, the, what everything is growing and uh, my allergies are bad at this time of the year. Hold on one second. I got to sneeze again. All 
Okay, maybe not. All right, I thought I was going to have to, but okay, sorry. Uh, so we we basically did what I thought we were going to do. We overshot because um, if you if you go back to last week's, you probably probably a week ago today, you could go back and listen to what I said, and I and I bet you my chart looks something like this, right? Last week, so we overshot, which is typical of a market that's exploding. And now we're coming off. Now, I, I'm not sure if this is like the top, 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 top in 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 the uh, in the bond market because you, you have to look at the breakout point on a weekly basis. As long as we're above this 135, you know, basically 136, as long as we're above 136 in the 10 year, uh, we're in breakout territory. So there's no reason to believe at this moment that that it is, it is, um, uh, that and Joe Joe just reminded me to one day one week today was the Biden bounce so that could have been actually the reason why the bond market uh, was you know one of the reasons why I was ripping but anyway um, this could be the, as long as we're above this level we're in breakout territory so I, all, all I can really expect with the reversal candle that we saw yesterday is maybe a continued dip a little bit but that means that yields would have to go up and if yields go up there's that is the force that was and, and you can see yesterday as yields were going up yesterday you can see them right here that was the force that was driving the 400 pip rally of the dollar yen off of the lows yesterday uh you know off of these these levels all right the one oh wherever we are at 102 and change so do you know, I'm going to be watching bonds pretty carefully today because I think the bond market, if if yields rally from here, let's just, you know, for argument's sake, let's say yields rally, then that typically will coincide with equities going higher. So, you know, we might get that, you know, move higher in equities that I'm hoping for. Again, I don't know for sure. And it's just, it's, um, it's, it's something that, you know, I'm just watching for clues because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out clues what the S and P is going to do versus um, what I, you know, assume is going to happen. I, I like to have confirmation from different asset classes, whether it's you know the bond market or whether it's uh, whether it's um, uh, you know the yen or maybe even gold. And speaking of which, I can take a real quick look at gold. Gold uh, it just continues to be so strong. I, I'm I'm not bearish on gold, as most of you guys know. Uh, what I am hoping for is we see a little bit of pullback in gold. And if we do a pullback in gold, something that looks like this would also coincide with um, with equities bouncing a little bit, dollar yen bouncing, yield yields would bounce too. So again, those are just um, you know, just some things that I'm trying to pay pretty close attention to. So let me do this. Let me um, let me address a couple of comments. Um, uh, Gavin said, "Bounce in the S and P and Dax on all that news got sold into." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's the that's the thing about these markets is any any good news has basically just led us to, uh, uh, you know, better levels to sell, you know, the S and P or the DAX, which, you know, this is, this is a very characteristic of a bear market. When you get good news and the market can't rally on it, we're in a bear market. I mean, you know, you, you, you may say, well, Blake, we're not down 20%. I understand that, but you know, price action is going to tell you it's a bear market. Um, uh, <laughs> Ziggy said, Steve, if you think you are contagious, please step six feet away from the mic when you speak. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy's um, a funny guy. Blake, he's... we have data coming out now. Oh, data schmeda. Who cares about yeah. data? L literally, who's watching data? I don't care. It's CPI. Okay. Uh, it's a, a, little... a little bit hotter than expected. Yeah, I mean, no one cares. Stagflation. Woohoo. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, who cares? It ain't gonna move the market. 
2.4% reported inflation. Uh, no why wouldn't you want to, why wouldn't you? I, I was telling, I was telling everybody on the, uh, the daily roundup webinar, cause somebody had asked about like, what do you think, what do you think the market's going to do during CPI tomorrow? And my response yesterday afternoon, uh, during the daily roundup was no one cares unless it's unless it's employment data or it's an interest rate decision uh, all this economic data that you see right now or that's coming is all you know irrelevant um we care about coronavirus uh you know number of cases tests that are being made um containment in countries uh and uh jobs reports and interest rates that's it anything else is all ancillary stuff we don't no one cares okay uh, Ziggy said, bless you, Blake. Make sure you sneeze in your elbow. <laughs> it is literally, well, for now, let's just knock on wood. Let's just hope it says uh, just allergies. All right. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, let me see. See how we practice social distancing here at our, yeah, camp. exactly. You're in Arizona, they're in Greece. That's right. You know, hey, we went ahead of the times. Uh, yeah, meters we, away, people. Fist we were bumps prepping only. for this four years ago. <laughs> we're gonna do air fist bumps. Actually, you know, my uh, my kids' soccer team. You know, they, you know, they, they he plays on a club soccer team. They can't uh, they can't high five anymore. I mean, kids are contagious. And you know, I'm, it's, it's it's interesting. I was just sorry to interrupt. I just I saw somewhere they said that there was a rugby rugby match and they didn't shake hands. And then during the match, they're like all over each other, right? <laughs> so, right. That's just a bit weird. <laughs> that is that is funny, actually. That's a bit uh, uh, ironic, right? Um, anyway, well, uh, so how are you guys doing today? I know Steve, you're not feeling too uh, too terribly great. It's okay. It's gonna it's gonna pass. Yeah, uh, they, as as it, as it always does. Um, yeah. And uh, Stelios, how are you today? I'm very good. We're all locked up in in our house, and uh, nobody's coming in, nobody's going out. So great. you think so? <laughs> so are you guys on lockdown ring, right now? Ring on your doorbell in a few minutes. <laughs> is that require? Is that a mandate? No. In Greece now? No, no. but the school schools are closed. So as yep. long as the kids are not out bringing everything from the other yeah. kids, then we just stop, stop everything. So, so yeah. how's the how's the how's the uh, a attitude there, and what's uh, what's the attitude around uh, the Athens area? Because I know you guys have had, I mean, the, the the difference between like where a lot of us Americans live, which are out in the suburbs or you know, not in city centers, versus Athens, where you have a, a a big concentration of people. How how's the how's the attitude in Athens? What's the what's the temperature there with the as far as people and what they're discussing well, personally, calm so far. What, what i hear yeah people don't really care which is very worrying <laughs> are they out and about going grocery shopping yeah, etc yeah. not as good. much as regularly but it's not that you know yeah. there are places places are empty etc so it's i mean if you know that if you know you're going to notice the difference but yeah. nothing to write home about you know yeah yeah okay Interesting. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, you know, there's aside from toilet paper disappearing. I mean, that's the thing about toilet paper, uh, you Which, know, you by the way, about, hasn't happened in Greece at all. Uh, that's well, I mean, at you all. think you, th you think about it, it's like, Oh, that's one thing I don't want to run out of. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cause it's, it'll sit on the shelf forever. You don't have to worry about it, you know, going bad. And I definitely don't run around, want to run out of toilet paper because if I run out of toilet paper, then we got some serious problems. What am I going to do? You know, I'm not wiping my butt with my leaf. Uh, a leaf out from the front yard. So, yeah, I, you know, the, the, I mean, that's, uh, you, you understand why. It would work, is. though. It's got a great shelf life, and you don't want to run out of it. So I wouldn't want to be your gardener. If no, no, no. At no, the very all. beginning, a few weeks ago, uh, we actually had a temporary um, um, crisis with things like spaghetti, uh, you know, anything that, you know, yeah. is edible and, you know, you can store for a long time. Yeah. For a few days, those went out of stock. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I wouldn't say that I've noticed anything else missing and they've restocked. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's good. Uh, that's good to know. I mean, it's, you know, here it's 
pretty much business as usual, but I'm not in a city center. So, you know, you go into New York and I'm sure Chicago probably feels something. Very My special. sister's in Palm Desert Lake and she went to Costco. There's no toilet paper, paper towels. Um, yeah. You know, sanitizers. Um, yeah. The, those, those like places uh, to Palm Desert is very similar to where I'm at. You know, it's just yeah. a, you know, it's, I mean, you know, desert. It, it's, it's a desert. Well, it's a desert, <laughs> but no, no one's really too terribly worried yet. And it's, it's, it's not, it, unfortunately it won't be a big concern here in the United States uh, until you start to see more cases and more deaths. And then people will start to panic. We could be in a very similar situation that Italy was in 10 days ago, 10 days from now, 10 days ago, Italy was like, eh, you know, and then all of a sudden the cases are increasing, people are dying. And then, you know, now, now, you know, Italy's on lockdown. So that's, uh, that's one thing that you have to think about if where you're at, think about how escalations have increased in places like Italy that can happen to you. If you don't think it can happen to you, go talk to the people in New Rochelle, um, New York where they're locked down now they're, well they're locked down there's a there's now a you know a presence of uh, uh of um, community a national guard oh yeah that's right national guard. Yeah, yeah and like uh one of the guys in my office he's like yeah i was almost out of gas and i was driving from manhattan to to, to greenwich he's like and i i was passing by new rochelle and i was like oh i can get off here and get gas he's like no i'm gonna I'll, i'd rather run out of gas i'm gonna just continue to go <laughs> so anyway yeah. um so, uh, so, uh, well, guys, you know, like I said, it's quiet. I'm, I'm really just looking at the S and P's. We're, we're getting really close to that support, guys. So, um, so, uh, just be careful of where we're at. You know, be mindful of where the markets are at. Um, and, and the candle expansion, uh, like I don't know, like for me since we've had this break, when I look at the candles now where I normally could take a position, figure, oh, that candle's starting to fail. Uh, I could just get short here. But then when you look at the, uh, you know, where the high came in, normally you'd be risking 30, 40 pips. And now because of the expansion of volatility of ranges, that same candle that you would have traded, say, two weeks ago, now you have like a 90 pip spread between where you would short it and where the high is yeah yeah you know I what mean, i mean yeah it no, no, i i i hear what you're saying and and it, and, and the, well now we're seeing contraction but we can see expansion here very shortly and you go to sleep you, you go to sleep at night and you wake up and it's a completely different picture yeah uh you know it's it hard talking, to deal with for me I was talking to my neighbor. He's, uh, he, you know, he's, you know, we were talking about like his, some of his retirement stuff. Cause he's, go, he, he was leaving and, um, I'm watching their cat and, um, he's like, yeah, you know, we were up really big today. I bet we're going to be down really big tomorrow. And he's like, I just kind of, you know, figured that that's going to be the case. And yeah, I mean, you know, up yeah. 4% yesterday, down 3% today, you know, yeah. Business as usual. So um, uh, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Steve and Stelios and, uh, for the last 20 minutes. And Steve, if, you're, if your throat's starting to hurt, let, let me know. I won't go anywhere, um, but I'll let you okay, take over sure and talk, talk a little bit. All right, guys, hey, hey, have a great one. And for those of you that haven't tried out Forex Analytics, make sure you do so. Um, we'd love to have you part of our community. So we'll see you there. And those hey, guys, like, Blake, don't, don't benefit thanks, from your trading. Just, you know, visit Forest Park FX. You can uh, participate in our investment program, you know, and subsidize your subscription to Forex Analytics, or you can just get cash back. Uh, in any case, you know, don't leave money on the table. Just, you know, speak with them. Uh, they can help you either find the ideal broker for your trading style, or even, you know, if, you, if you've made a good choice, stay with your broker and get money back. I mean, there is absolutely no downside whatsoever. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, you know, it Steve. Is. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's good to have two accounts, different brokers. Oh, I agree with uh, you. You know, I mean, how do you know if you have a good racehorse until you run it against another? Yeah. That's that's not the only reason, Dale. Um, I can give you plenty of reasons. First of all, uh, sometimes it helps um, using different trading styles and methods. Yeah, people on do different that. accounts. 
So they have a that's day trading thing. account and a position exactly. account. Yeah. Exactly. So, for example, you know, you want to use high leverage in some positions. It's a good thing if you want to, you know, isolate that on a separate account. Or, for example, you might be um, a diverse trader trading plenty of instruments, in which case, uh, you might need a second brokerage firm because there are a few instruments that you want to trade that your main one doesn't offer, but you don't want to go off your main one because, you know, it still gives you, you know, the best uh, deal of, you know, for your trading style. Um, another reason is you might want to do something foolish and you want that to be completely isolated. I, I can give you an example about that. Uh, when the S&B had the floor, I, I used to trade Euro Swiss with very, very high leverage. And of course, I did that on a separate trading account. Um, so, you know, various reasons um, that you, you know, you might want to actually, I advise uh, for you to have, you know, a second account. And if you are to have a second account, you know, why have it, uh, you know, with the same brokerage firm? Because something happens, I mean, to that brokerage firm, um, you know, there is, some downtime or you know some disruption or whatever uh, at least you will be able to trade in the other one yeah absolutely another another good reason yeah not to have all your trading capital in one basket yes yes yeah. exactly okay so my quick comment on the bank of england um as soon as i i, I read i saw that they cut 50 base points i was like why are they doing this you know it's like it doesn't make any sense to combat this particular crisis, the rate cuts, obviously it does have some effect, but uh, it's not really the, the, the thing to do. And I, you know, I wrote this on Twitter. Somebody replied, oh, you know, uh, in the UK, there's a huge mortgage base and uh, this will help uh, people with their mortgages. Yes, of course. Uh, although I did have a mortgage for quite a few years in the UK and you know how it happens. They cut 50 base points. The whole thing doesn't get reflected. I remember they cut, from, they, they cut from five and three quarters percent in 2008 down to nearly zero. And my mortgage rate didn't even go down a half uh, by 50 percent. So, you know, it was like it doesn't get um, uh, carried over. Plus, what is what is the issue that we have now with the economy? Is it that money is expensive that people cannot borrow? No. It's people staying in, not spending anything because they're scared, you know, crapless of what might happen. They don't do anything. So cheaper funding, cheaper money, will that change anything? Absolutely not. Um, obviously, it's good for psychology and it's good to have something for the recovery. But actually now, will 50 base points less do anything? No, they, uh, they won't. It's good um, for the psychology. I'm not even sure about that, Stelio. Yeah. As I said, the, the previous time we had all central banks in a coordinating, uh, co coordinated manner, just you know throwing everything at the market. It yeah. was in 2008 and the market couldn't care less. Yeah. Of course, somebody will say that you know at some point, you know they're going to do enough. There's going to be a big bazooka and you know the market is going to respond. But my interpretation is that at some point, prices are going to be, again, low enough for the market to care to respond. Yeah, yeah. Until, until prices go back to, you know, more normal levels, uh, when, when the market is back to not pricing rainbows, uh, rainbows and unicorns, then people are going to start considering the upside for taking risk. Because why would you be taking risk when there are days in this market that respectable stocks can dump by 25 and 30 percent on a day? Yeah, like, for absolutely. example, we saw oil stocks do, and I'm not talking about the ones that have like, you know, crappy balance sheets, because we saw some of them dump within a day more than 50 percent i'm talking about the big companies yeah exxon and uh, Royal, yeah. royal dutch and all those yeah they are nearly all-time all lows so yeah, yeah because we had some of the crappy ones those that you know are loaded with debt etc yeah, that of course. combined friday and monday lost something like 60 to 70 percent of their of, of their capitalization which yeah. is like insane yeah yes um Okay, to actually, it's speaking about the UK before, and just to close that up, they did actually um, announce two more uh, measures, uh, which are more in the right way, but then again, 
they're not going to solve anything right now, but they re they announced a new term funding scheme for small and medium enterprises. Uh, so that's going to help them borrow. Although, again, the issue with the current problem is not that people cannot borrow at low enough rates. You know, that's not the issue. But, you know, this will help the economy, obviously, in the medium term. And they also released what is called the UK's counter cyclical capital buffer, which is something that um, uh, it's for <laughs> banks exposure to UK borrowers. So basically, net net, it just releases more money for the banks to lend. N net again, net, they're going to start guaranteeing once again uh for you know the debt and the liabilities of several companies and the only the only one that's going to be on the hook is going to be the taxpayer as always yes <laughs> yeah and they keep repeating the same mistakes that exacerbate the severity of the business cycle over and over again they i mean it's it's amazing if you saw this type of practice being applied on any other uh, sector on, on the globe, you, you would consider them like crazy, but they keep repeating the same mistakes and they do it even more, although they haven't worked the first time or the second time or the third time. And the only thing they manage to do is postpone the inevitable. They keep doing them again and again and again. I mean, if, for example, quantitative easing worked, if zero rates as emergency measures worked, you know how we would know about it because we would have had only one round of quantitative easing only once seeing uh, every, let's say, 50 years, seeing countries go to 0% rates. Now, on the contrary, we're stuck with 0% rates with, you know, short-term bounces off them, and we're just increasing further and further quantitative easing. Of course, you know, none of the monetary uh, policy gimmicks um, are going to solve the actual real problems of the economies, and that's the biggest problem of all. Yes. Anyhow, absolutely. back to the Actually, charts, unless um, we have anything else. Uh, no, one, just one last thing that, that, that I read just now. Um, uh, we have the UK channel, can, Chancellor uh, Sunak um, announcing the budget, and um, he did say the response to the virus will be temporary, targeted, timely and coordinated with the Bank of England. And this guy on Twitter, who I, I quite um, like to follow, says, uh, please remember this next time you are told the Bank of England is independent of government. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. let's I see mean, what the UK... They, they, they're not even holding the pretenses anymore, yeah. right? I mean, if I, I honestly don't know how many people out there really believe that central banks are independent. Because, you know, if you do, let me give you my email. I have a bridge to sell you once the webinar is over. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's see what happens tomorrow with ECB. They're expected to cut a little bit. I mean, 10 base points or 20. Which is going to make zero yeah. difference. Yeah. But zero. Uh, obviously, let's see what other measures will be taken. But really, what we need is fiscal measures. What we need is actually organized measures from the government to make sure that everybody isolates. And, you know, if this is done properly, have you seen uh, Japan? Japan um, started way before Europe, you know, way before Italy with the, with the first cases. They still have, I think, something like under 20 deaths. And remember, the demographic is much older. Uh, you know, they're much tighter in terms of uh, areas and all that. And they're controlling it. Why? Because everybody's staying home and doing what they need to be doing. So I think that's what needs to be done. A government coordinated action to make, to enforce this. And then everything's going to be fine eventually. So anyway... Let's see. Indeed, indeed. Um, okay, so um, uh, Charles Steve on a declining crude. Uh, guess NOC will suffer too. How bad versus USD and Swiss? Yeah, obviously, uh, obviously, crude being under pressure is a huge, huge um, 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 headwind for both the NOC and the Canadian. Okay, they're not as tightly correlated as they used to, but of course, it does play a role. Now, the first question here is, how low can crude go, right? So we know that we almost touched the multi-year low, which uh, you know was registered at the start of 2016. It was uh, at just above $26, if we're talking about WTI. Um, and you know we rebounded somewhat. The question is, was that low? Uh, you know, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Uh, let me be very clear. Uh, I do believe that crude is going to be an amazing buying opportunity 
in the not so distant future because there is absolutely no way that crude can uh, be sustained at prices you know below thirty dollars for you know you know a big period of time, especially given my bias having to do with the dollar so especially crude you know priced in in dollars no way if you ask me but that doesn't mean that we can't stay here for weeks you know even worst case scenario even months and doesn't even mean that we can go down to 20 or even you know high teens very temporarily let me make it clear very temporarily so <clears throat> as i've said before with commodities you know the lower the price goes the better the risk reward is because opposite from what can happen to a stock a commodities price cannot go down to zero as simple as that i mean there is no indefinite downside for crude can crude trade to 15 no it can't and if it can do that for a day yeah okay whatever but that's not the point i mean you cannot have the world still needs crude and it's going to need for many many years to come and there is absolutely no way that there's going to be supply in the market if prices stay where they are. First of all, U.S. sale industry is going to go completely bust if this, uh, you know, becomes a thing for more than a few weeks. U.S. sale industry was anyhow, you know, at a, you know, at big, big trouble because U U.S. sale industry is a high um, cost. Uh, production uh, segment of of the uh, of the oil market, and and that's a big problem because they've been um, running underwater for you know quite some time during the past few years, and most of them are hugely indebted. So, first of all, there is a big chance that this industry is going to you know go out, or you know alternative is we're going to see some some kind of a TARP program, but but you know for for this industry now does this fix the problem no it doesn't um so um supply is going to start getting reduced and you know with quite a fast pace you know from all over the globe and that eventually is going to balance um with whatever decrease in demand we have and then crude is going to have a lot of upside so going back to usd knock especially First of all, USD NOC is now trading above this um, multi-year ascending channel. You can see it here. Um, but, you know, would I be buying it? No, I wouldn't be buying it. I mean, I would be more than happy to sort it once I get a big signal, but I wouldn't be buying it because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very skeptical about the upside that's, that, that's left here. If you compare the fundamentals of the Norwegian economy to the US economy, it's not even fun. It's not even fun. Norway not only has an extremely low debt, but they've managed to set aside one trillion dollars in the sovereign fund from the income they make from crude, right? One trillion. And if one trillion doesn't sound much to you, just consider that the population of Norway is 5.4 million. So 5.4 million people have managed to run their economy in a healthy manner and put aside a trillion dollars. So, you know, if you want to be long the US dollar against, you know, the Norwegian knock, you know, be my guest. But there is no way in a billion years I'm doing that. Because at some point, and in the not so distant future, the USD knock is going to be one of the best FX trades you've seen in decades, in my opinion. It's going to crash in, you know, like it's nobody's business. Because at some point in the not so distant future, fundamentals are going to start to matter. Debt is going to start to matter. Debt always matters you can ignore it for a period of time and in a coordinated effort they can agree that we all ignore it but you know at the end of the day that creates huge huge headwinds to an economy you have to spend more and more of your tax receipts to service it um, it creates huge issues indirectly for example the huge pile of global debt is what forces central banks 
to keep rates at zero. Actually, it's not forcing them, but the combination of central banks not being independent and wanting to give a free pass to politicians to not do the right thing is what forces them in combination with the debt to keep rates at zero. So um, keeping rates at zero creates huge issues, for example, for pension funds. Isn't that going to affect the economy? Of course it will. So, you know, you, you solve one aspect of the problem by creating, you know, huge issues on, you know, on other parts of the economy with the only benefit being that those are not issues that are going to blow up in your face immediately. And, you know, it's the usual kick down the can, kick the can down the road, you know, extend and pretend, you know, you can call it as you wish, but it's the same type of deal. But at some point, the further down the future inevitably becomes today because when you push something forward in the future there is a day that that's the future right so you know when all those things start mattering again and trust me they will matter again they mattered for eternity and they will matter once again then Nor the norwegian kroner is going to be one of the best currencies you will want to own so no, I'm not going to be buying this breakout, no matter where crude goes, even if it goes down to $5 per barrel, which isn't going to happen. But I'm just saying, I'm going to be looking for the reversal and then I'm going to be buying as much as I can and I'm, be, I'm going to be holding as much as I can. Now, Canadian dollar is a totally different story. As you know very well, those of you that, are, that have been here, I've been very bearish the Canadian dollar. Actually, the USD card is probably one of the very, very, very few FX pairs that I'm long, uh, my bias, sorry, I don't mean I have a position, you wouldn't know if I had. Uh, my, my bias is being long USD against the Canadian and because, you know, Canada doesn't have all the benefits that I just explained that Norway does. Canada also has, you know, huge problems to their economy. So bottom line, I do think that USD card can keep moving higher. It has broken through um, um, and one year, one year and a bit uh, consolidation formation here. And I think that this breakout is very legit. And I, I could easily see um, Canadian trading back above 140, right? Uh, in any case, by the way, any pullback towards like 136.60, um, if that doesn't work, 135, 70, these are good buying opportunities in my opinion, especially for some reason, your bias is being long the dollar. I have no idea why that, that would be. I mean, from my personal perspective, I mean, any, any you know, any, <clears throat> any position is respected as long as you know what you're doing and you have the proper risk management. But in any case, if you're looking to be long the dollar, definitely use the card is where you want to be looking uh, to do that. So, you know, these are the areas I would be looking to buy. Um, what about palladium? I'm still short palladium, actually. Um, I'm still short palladium and, you know, I'm not very enthusiastic about it in the sense I'm, you know, I'm, I'm deep in the money, but I, I really was hoping and it's not unlikely to happen. Uh, but I was really hoping that palladium is going to really crash, like, you know, see, a few more days like the one we had in the first day we reversed lower, which was like at some point we were like 13% lower. Um, so far, the pullback is orderly. I mean, orderly in comparison to anyhow, the amazing um, rate of appreciation that we had for this pair. Um, you know, my thesis remains that, you know, the next downside support is at 2,250. But I really want to see Palladium uh, back to 2000. And I think it can happen. Now, I, as I said, I would be more than happy to see some kind of an acceleration lower. But, you know, so far, even if this is a corrective move, I do think that we can at least make it towards 2250. So I think there's more downside to come here. Now, would I be selling it here if I had no position? Probably not. Um, I mean, you know, you had a few opportunities to, to sell it. Um, a risk reward probably isn't, you know, on your side if you want to do it, you know, today, right here, right now. <clears throat> Let me see more questions. 
the best is just taking another 50 point ship and will surely like nothing. Could you look at crude oil? Yeah, we already did that. By the way, mm, now, now that we mentioned crude, look at natural gas. And this is a very interesting divergence if you're asking me. Unfortunately, I've taken profits on natural gas when we pulled back my, um, my, my stop loss got triggered, which I had trailed into my profit. Look at natural gas. I mean, crude is still moving lower, and natural gas seems to be breaking above this Great descending ch channel. So this is also something I, I'm, you know, I'm paying attention to because this divergence might be indicative of like a big, bigger turn in in this market. So I, I, I think that, yeah, I think that's something you you have to pay attention to. Because, because when what happened with crude, people don't want to touch energy, period. All right. So you're not going to have a, a big flow of public money coming into nat gas when everyone thinks, so, you know, we're going uh, And green. speaking of that, I think it's worth mentioning that great article that Kirk uh, Spano wrote. Yeah. Uh, and he very well uh, made the point. He said that, listen, I'm going to be looking to be a buyer of, of, of oil. Uh, in, in the future, um, but you know you should be very very careful buying um, companies. companies. Yeah, yeah, because, of because they're in big trouble. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's that's worth noting. Well, our guest is here, buddy, and you could go rest your throat. Yeah, absolutely. Who do we have today? Uh, first time guest, uh, uh, William Delwich. I hope I have your name last name pronounced correctly, Will and. Uh, you know, his friends call him Willie, I believe, and he's with R. W. Baird. They're an upper echelon uh, firm, uh, a lot of great research, great reputation. And in fact, Joe just uh, uh, put on Skype an article that Willie wrote on recent market action. So I'm looking forward to okay, great. talking Enjoy. to him. Yeah. So, okay, Willie, I'm going to... Uh, promote you to a panelist it looks like you might be calling in i know we I'm didn't hoping. cover plenty of questions uh, guys and gals i'll do that tomorrow okay feel better buddy thank thank you dale okay so i think i unmuted him no you haven't i can do it if you want all right go ahead done willie welcome hello hello willie how are you Good. Uh, very nice to meet you. Thank you very much for spending some time uh, during these historic market moves to be with us today. Uh, very nice to meet you. Okay, so uh, you're on a phone. I'm going to be sharing my screen while we're talking about things. You know, uh, I, I just read quickly the last article you published uh, for See It Market. But, you know, before we get to the markets, it's always interesting to our audience to know how people get from point A to point B. Maybe you could tell us about uh, how you broke into the business and how you got uh, to where you are now, a little bit about your journey in uh, trading and managing money. Can you give us a little more volume, Willie? Oh, I will try to do that. There you go. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, better. So, so uh, I've, I've been with Bear for 20 years. I, okay. I started more on a econ background and then switched over to the market with kind of giving advice to our financial advisors to help them. You know, I'm getting a bunch of echo in the background from your speaker. Is there any way we could fix that? Yeah. Uh, it I, I don't know how to correct it. It's all on your end. Okay. It, uh, you're not echoing to me. You're hearing yourself echo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, you know, next time you're on, I, you know, I'd advise you probably just use your laptop, come in and talk to us that way. But uh, could, can you move forward with it or is it too annoying? Yeah. We could no, always I, reschedule. I, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. Okay. So... Uh, so go ahead. So I, I, I've been 
uh, focus mostly on, on kind of high level macro stuff for our, our financial advisors, giving them a sense of what's going on in the economy, going on um, in the market. Along the way, I, I got the kind of requisite uh, credentials, I got to work in my CFA, got a, a master's in economics, got my CMT, so it's um, really an attempt to to be able to provide perspective from, from multiple angles, not, not just um, you know, just specifically the technical, but the kind of what the macro backdrop is, right? and, um, what some of the fundamentals are as well. So, um, I tell you what, Willie, the, the volume quality is pretty poor. Okay. So, uh, you know, what I would suggest is uh, you and I reschedule and next time, mm -hmm. you know, if you could just you know, log in instead of call in, uh, we'll be able to com communicate better. Okay. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, yo, that, that's great. That's great. Now you that. sound great, but <laughs> that's only when you're concentrating on talking loud. If you if you do it like that, we could do this interview. Otherwise, okay, well, I, I need to I, hold I think the we phone. Should probably reschedule it. Okay, buddy. I'm, I'm hearing right, so much uh, in the background. Uh, we'll reschedule. Uh, before the coronavirus peaks. How about that? <laughs> huh? That sounds great. All right. All right. Thank you, Willie. I'll get yeah, back yeah. to you. All okay. right. All right. Bye bye. Right. So, it's unfortunate, but I think uh, you could see Willie's article there on um, See It Market. Let me just take a quick look around before I say goodbye to everybody. So S&Ps are trying to hold, getting a little fade in the gold up here. I don't know, I'm I'm flat. You know, I, uh, during these times, I know you, you got, everyone feels like they're missing a lot of things. I do as well. I feel like you're missing everything with all these big moves. And this is the time to say to yourself, it's okay, I don't see anything. If I'm patient, I will. So, uh, and let things come to you. And the markets will be here. Make sure your equity is. And most of all, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Uh, I have DJ Thistle. DJ's made some fantastic calls. So, uh, see everyone in members chat. Don't forget to give us a try and become part of our trading community so that when phase ends, like it is right now, you just go into the chat room and say, hey, Blake, uh, Yen's coming off. What do you think? So I'll see everyone tomorrow. Adios.